What do I do with my hands in worship? Do I need to sing? What if I feel uncomfortable? Today we're talking about worshiping God with everything. Have you noticed that outward expressions are typically just a natural response to the things we experience? We don't shout for our favorite sports team because that's what we're supposed to do. We do it because we care, sometimes a little too much, about what just happened on the field or the court. We don't mourn for the death of a friend because it's some sort of unwritten rule we're supposed to follow. We weep because our emotions naturally lead us there when we've lost someone we dearly care about. So wouldn't it be backwards? not to express the joys and sorrows that well up when our head collides with our heart. Wouldn't it be strange to sing about how holy God is and how much we adore him with our hands in our pockets as we yawn the words? How can we respond to the God who raised our spiritually dead, hell-bound lives back to life with a straight face and our arms folded? King David was the innovator of music and corporate worship. He wrote a bunch of psalms, also known as songs, for the sheer purpose of engaging people holistically, mind, heart, body, and worship. And it seems like he knew that posture is an outward expression of an inward reality. He seemed to know that our body naturally acts the way our hearts feel. And for Christians who believe that all of God's word is inspired by God's spirit, we must ultimately acknowledge that King David's psalms are the word of God. So the teachings throughout the scriptures to bow humbly, Psalm 95, to raise hands joyfully, Nehemiah 8, to sing loudly, Psalm 66, to clap and shout joyfully, Psalm 47, aren't merely King David or any other biblical author's encouragements to us, but rather God's command to us. God doesn't command our begrudging obedience either. He commands our joy. And inward joy is expressed and encouraged by outward rejoicing. I love what C.S. Lewis said about this very thing. All enjoyment spontaneously overflows into praise unless shyness or the fear of boring others is deliberately brought in to check it. The world rings with praise. Lovers praising their mistresses, readers their favorite poet, walkers praising the countryside, praise of weather, wines, dishes, actors, motors. Horses, colleges, countries, children, flowers, mountains, rare stamps, rare beetles, even sometimes politicians or scholars. Except where intolerably adverse circumstances interfere, praise almost always seems to be inner health made audible. And then he says this powerful sentence. Just as men spontaneously praise whatever they value, so they spontaneously urge us to join them in praising it. Isn't she lovely? Wasn't it glorious? Don't you think that magnificent? The psalmists in telling everyone to praise God are doing what all men do when they speak of what they care about. So the issue then when it comes to engaging our in worship has far less to do with does God command it and more to do with do I care about it? If worship is revelation and response, then God's people will forever respond to God's goodness that's been revealed to us in his word. The foundation of our worship can't be our whimsical preferences. The real worship war we must engage in is not fighting over musical styles, but fighting our flesh, battling to see Jesus in all of his glory and then responding to him in praise. In Christ, we have enough grace to be saved from the wrath to come enough grace to be sustained in the day-to-day grind of worshiping God in every circumstance. And I know you might be thinking, well, what if I don't feel it? I don't want to be fake. We don't always lift our voice or our hands because we feel it. Sometimes we lift them in hopes that our heart will follow. Commitment to praise God often precedes the feeling to praise God. Perhaps you're shy, introverted, or just uncomfortable for whatever reason expressing your praise to God. You're tempted to believe, I'm not the singing type. Let me encourage you today. God's commands are not tailored to our personality type. He wants us and all of our personalities to bend toward his commands. So don't get caught up thinking about what you look like when you're singing on Sunday mornings. Get caught up thinking about the one who saved you from your sin and worship him with everything.